Hello, friends. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're having a great life. I am here because I was honored to be included in the Mount Holyoke College's um, Alumni Club of Southern California and uh, in their monthly digest. So a little email that gets sent out. The, in the email, they highlighted the work of a couple creative alums living in Southern California. And I'll mention them because they're awesome too. And I am honored to be mentioned in the same breath as Deborah Martin Chase, a renowned producer in Hollywood, um, producing films, also producing uh, plays. I know she's currently working on a project with another alum. And that looks like it'll be amazing, I'm sure. Um, if some of the films you may have heard of are Harriet, which was released in 2019, she also is responsible for producing the Cheetah Girls. So, like, that's amazing. And um, Cinderella with Brandy, which was an iconic film at least when I was growing up. If you haven't seen it, you should totally go see it. It's a musical. It's amazing. Highly, highly recommend. Uh, the uh, the play that she that Miss Parks is working on now is Top Dog Underdog uh, with Susan Laurie Parks. Okay, then we have Joey. There's not a last name listed, but Joey is a freelancer full-time as a Steadicam operator. So that's super cool. Steadicam is key to a lot of films these days. We've also got Grace Kimball, who I do know because she graduated in 2016 and I graduated in 2015. Um, currently studying, uh, getting a graduate degree in theater and dance, a PhD program. So official. And then there's me, yay. And then Megan, class of 2000, who is the director of production management at Paramount, uh, creates movie and television that will air on MTV, VH1, Paramount, Comedy Central. So clearly, so cool. And uh, Megan Fillmore, I did find her LinkedIn, so I was able to get her name. So anyway, those are some super cool alums uh, from Mount Holyoke College who are working in the film and television and entertainment, performance entertainment space uh, in Los Angeles, California, the year 2023. <laughs> so I uh, submitted, you know, they uh, my answers. They sent questions and requ uh, requested answers to all of these various questions. And I was pretty detailed in my response, as one likes to do. That said, I gave a lot of information and they couldn't fit all of that in, which is super normal, totally understandable. But I figured there are at least some answers that I think are useful for people entering into the film industry. So I, I'm just going to read them. You guys like sit back, relax, start, you know, making dinner, clean your room. This is, I'm just going to be very, this is very low key, very low key. Just going to read, read off these answers. No big, exciting visuals. Like, trust me, you're not going to miss anything. It's just me and my face. Cool. Okay. So the first question I was sent what type of work do you do in the theater? My answer. <laughs> I do have a background in theater. However, at this time, my, par my primary focus is in the film industry where I have worked as an actor and producer and continue to work in those roles. As a producer, I manage the organizational elements of film projects, including permitting, hiring crew, budgeting, insurance, distribution, etc. However, my passion is in performance. I am an actor as well as an interviewer slash host for talk show style content and live events. 
I think that my presentation skills developed while working as a tour guide at Mount Holyoke. That said, I am thankful for my time in the theater and in event management. Shout out to the network and student programs at Mount Holyoke, uh, specifically because I did a lot of event management through those organizations. Those experiences prepared me to develop a career in the arts. When I worked in the theater, I take on responsibilities um, as an actor or stage manager. As a stage manager, I assist in organizing productions, managing props, making schedules, coordinating wardrobe, etc. During my time at Mount Holyoke, I was able to work as a stage manager at the Peregrine Theater Ensemble in Provincetown, Massachusetts, thanks to Link Funding. So um, basically, the college provides funding for you to do a unpaid or low-paying internship. As for acting, there is a lot that goes into it, but that final product is shared with the audience, so I won't go into details. Um, do I want to add anything here? I don't I don't think so. Obviously, acting in itself deserves a video. You know, producing in itself deserves an entire video. Um, and there's a lot of content out there about that. So Maybe, you know, if you have specific questions, let me know and maybe I'll do another live like this or something. Short version of your roles, question mark. <laughs> Sorry, that was the next question. Acting, character development, memorization, research, classes and training, producing, organizational tasks necessary for the production to succeed from pre-production to post-production. Pre-production is before you film. Production is when you are filming, and post-production is when you're done filming. That said, pre-production and post are just as important as production. Um, in pre-production, you, you get your permits, you make sure everything's cast, you get your uh, department heads in order, you know, like you build your team, You those are the people that you're going to need ready to go and prepared before you actually set up the gear and shoot the film, right? So that's key and I think a little underappreciated sometimes, I think, just saying. Uh, the only reason I say that is because when you start production and you don't have those things in order, production is a lot harder than it needs to be. You're, it's just long hours. There are more potentials for more there is more potential for mistakes. Um, the exhaustion is very real. The cost is also very real. If you need to book something last minute, it's kind of like buying a plane ticket. If you buy your plane ticket three months in advance, you're probably going to be paying less for that ticket than if you book it the day before. Similar with locations. Or something's not available and then you're scrambling to find a new place. Anyway, this is like a side tangent, but just want to emphasize that I think pre-production is very important. And then in post-production, that is when you actually put the movie together. <laughs> you edit it. Everything gets put together. You got to do sound. Anything that didn't get done quite right when you were shooting needs to get fixed. Uh, you'll hear a joke phrase, <laughs> kind of a joke, sometimes not. Uh, quote, fix it in post, unquote. So uh, maybe there is a, um, uh, say you're filming in, outside of a coffee shop and on the windows of the coffee shop, there are flyers for different community events or whatever. And one of the community events is the opening of a Nike store. And then you film, you don't realize that you've got the Nike logo and everything. You have to fix it in post. So take out the logo um, just to protect yourself from potentially having a trademark infringement issues. So if you notice it there, 
you might hear someone say, ah, fix it imposed, in which case it's like, oh, okay, we're deciding to make that decision. Usually it's a joke though. And usually you just take that flyer down because it's a lot easier to take the flyer down than to manipulate a moving image. You may have guessed that already. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe you did. Maybe not. Okay. Anyway, cool. So how do you anticipate or are you already balancing your career with family obligations? I try to get family obligations on the calendar early in the year so I can plan accordingly. My parents both live on the East Coast and there are pretty big gaps between visits. At this time, I do not have any plants, pets, or children, so I have a lot of flexibility in my schedule, and that's been helpful. Long term, my partner has kids, so I do my best to act as support staff for them when they need me, and I'm very thankful to have them in my life. This is true. They are very cool people, so I'm thankful. I'm also thankful that I have no real responsibility over them. I do not need to make sure they're at school on time. I do not have to, you know, go to doctor's appointments or like make sure they go to the dentist or buy them things. Like having children is a huge commitment. Kudos to you if you have children. Amazing. I am not prepared for that. Um, so – I think this question is really meant for someone who has settled down a little bit more than me at this time, but um, but um, that's it. I don't know. I've told you. I've told you what I've got. Uh, I'm not gonna. S mm. <laughs> like the gears are turning. What do I want to say? I think that you should do whatever is best for you in your life, and you know, follow your passion, but also follow your logic. Um, if you're passionate about being in the industry, do that. If you're passionate about having kids, do that. If you're passionate about both, do both. Just understand that each one will impact the other. Your time, your energy, your obligations, your priorities. Okay. Question Four. Where do you see your career moving in the next several years? In the next several years, I see my career developing within the areas of expertise I already have related to media and entertainment. I anticipate that I'll continue acting in various roles, plays, films, commercials, etc. I also plan to continue directing. One short film I directed in 2021 went through the festival circuit and has won some awards. The same goes for a short I produced. Uh, same goes for a short I produced, which also went through the festival circuit and was well received. I have a short in pre-production. <laughs> Why did I say that? That like it's not real. Uh, it's because I'm reading. I have a short in pre-production at this time and two in post-production, which I plan to submit to festivals. I look forward to producing a feature film when the time is right. I also started doing stand-up comedy and would love to see that develop more. I'm thankful for the support I've found with fellow MHC alums in SoCal. Uh, it's great to be able to critique each other's work and support each other. So that's my future plan. Also acting, I didn't really mention acting as much in this paragraph, but I did, I'm in an acting class. So if you're interested in acting, I highly recommend that you practice it and get good at it or better than you already are. Um, improv is great too. Cool. That question's not really that relevant. Okay. Um, how did Mount Holyoke College prepare you for your current career? Great. Uh, for any alums watching, honestly, I probably only Mount Holyoke alums will ever watch this. That's fine. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm glad to have given M okay. <laughs> I was oh my gosh, I was about to I was started so ready to be like <gasps> that's not it, I should have read these before I started this, just to remember what I wrote. Okay. 
I'm glad to have given Mount Holyoke some shout outs throughout these questions, i.e. mentioning the network and student programs and link funding. Um, I'm sure there are innumerable ways that my time at Holyoke has helped me in my personal life and career. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is the value of research, which I, which I did a lot of as a student. When submitting for a role or connecting with others in the industry, it's good to get a little bit of background information on them, their company, their projects, et cetera, their style, what they worked on last, so on. For example, when I looked for an agent, I created a spreadsheet with a list of agencies. Oh, okay. I am going to just pause right now and say this is one way to get an agent in L.A., or in general, if you're in Atlanta or Vancouver or New York or wherever you're focusing on developing your career in acting. This is one way. It's not going to work for everyone. Just want to say that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about – I'm going to read it so that I can – you are in the loop. But um, I'll mention a few other things that are could work. And also I'm the reason I'm especially emphasizing this is that this is a question actors ask – all the time. How do I get an agent? How do I get an agent? How do I get management? And it, it's it's different for everyone, but this is what I did. Okay. Um, when I looked for an agent, I created a spreadsheet with a list of agencies, the reps, their contact information, other actors they represent, and their submission process. When I got a follow-up email from a rep, I'm going to pause again. <laughs> okay. Just so you know what I did. I did all that stuff on the spreadsheet and then I, whatever their initial submission process is, I did that. So if they say, send an email to this email address or fill out this form through our website, I did those things. Most of them say, don't call me. <laughs> don't email. I mean, don't paper mail us things. Um, so the reason I did that was because I want whoever I'm interacting with in that space to know that I've at least done their – like I've been to their website, right? Like I've looked into them at least a little bit. This isn't just super random. Um, also, I have the capability to read directions and follow through on them. So anyway, I did that. And so emails, forms, whatever. When I got a follow-up email from a rep, I looked her up and realized we had been to the, uh, the same festival. So there was a festival one summer I went to a couple years back, and she is also really into this festival. So I was like, oh, cool, like a human thing that we have in common that we can talk about. So this was a great thing to talk about. <laughs> LOL. Why didn't I just keep reading my thing? This was a great thing to talk about. Um, because it was outside of the industry, allowing both of us to share more personal details and determine if we would be a good team. She's my agent now. Research matters, and so do relationships. It's easy to go in and just talk about like filmmaking or like talk about yourself a lot. Like, oh, I've done this and I've done this, and I think I'm great for this, and I think that you should you know book me because I'm really good at this, so you should just sign me, and I'm gonna do this. <sighs> Think about how you like to work with people. You like when they show a little interest in your life, right? Or like ask you questions or like just have a general sense of curiosity and, um, you know, attitude and manners, <laughs> right? So that's something to think about when you're finding an agent or any any support team. Uh, as an actor, that's kind of what you're doing. You, you build a team to support you. Uh, and it's got to work out for everybody. And generally that means making money, right? So I also asked this agent, I was like, what can I do to make your job as easy as possible so that I am booking and making money? And then she makes her cut of that. Other ways people get agents or management, um, Referrals. Everyone I've heard of, not um, not everybody, but a lot of people I've heard of um, say that they get referrals from other friends who are already represented. So that's cool too. That's great. Um, let me think. What else? 
you can do showcases, you can do plays, you can do, you know, submit your real places. So there's, you know, it's, it's partially about getting, getting your, your work out there, but the most important thing is to be good at your work and to be a professional person, in my opinion. Also circling back what I did, I did all of this emails when I had a play opening. So that way I could invite the agents to come see the play. Um, it wasn't just a cold email being like, hey, I'm an actor and I want you to represent me. It was an email saying, I'm an actor, I'm looking for representation, and I'm in a play right now. Would you like to come? So it's it's more of an invitation to engage rather than just like, like, excuse me, I need attention. Like, excuse me, you know? Okay. I think this is the last question. It is, but it's a doozy. So hang tight. <clears throat> let me just let me just bop over here. See, cool. Ooh, all right. Twenty minutes. We will get. We'll be done in the next ten minutes. <laughs> just to set expectations. <laughs> okay. How would you rate the importance of networking within your career field? Here's my answer. Well, that is a lovely segue from the question above. I would say networking and relationship building are very important to a career in entertainment. People often criticize the industry for being exclusionary and hard to break into. I have three thoughts on this. One, networking happens on the job. If you're interested in getting involved in this industry, industry find a way to get on set and do a good job while you're there. I value a mixer or networking event like anybody else, but the people I want to hire are people I've worked with um, already or those who are strongly recommended. That way I've seen them work and I know that they're professional and I can tell if they know how to do their job. As a producer, I love getting cast as an actor on a project because I meet a whole new group of crew members I can contact for future projects. I save every call sheet. That's a hot tip, FYI, especially for producers, but honestly, anyone in the industry. I save every every call sheet. I remember who I met on that set, and I make notes and stuff if I need to. And um, that way, it's I can reach out to them again. I have their contact information. That's amazing. Obviously, don't be creepy. Don't be creepy. That's a big no, <laughs> big no. <laughs> um, but um, as a producer, it's great to have that information, which I think I say more about right now. Blah, blah, blah. As a producer, I love getting cast as an actor on projects because I meet a whole new group of crew members I can contact for future projects. I save every call sheet. I recognize that this may seem – Exclusion. Oh, no, this is important. Okay. I recognize that this may seem exclusionary, but when you're working 12 hours in the rain or setting flares off inside of a car, you want to know you're surrounded by competent, trustworthy people. Get on set, start small, and the opportunities will grow. On my first project, I was a camera operator. Full disclosure, it was a camcorder. <laughs> so it wasn't like really hard <laughs> to operate that camera. But from there, I started conducting interviews. I started going to different sites and like reporting on things happening about town. I learned how to edit. I became a producer. I was asked, I was, you know, I was um, doing interviews in front of a live audience and being filmed during that interview for a YouTube release of the show. It was a talk show. After that, like immediately after the show, someone came up to me and asked me to be in a music video. From there, I was in a short film. From there, I was producing and I um, ended up working – like snowballed. It just snowballed is what I'm trying to say. I ended up working as a producer for someone I, I did my first acting gig with, film acting gig. So – I don't know exactly where I was going with that. <laughs> basically, basically, right, what I wanted to say. Start small. It will snowball. 
is what I'm I'm going for here. Be as I said, be professional and be good at what you do. Those are going to be key. Uh, but you know, just just trust in yourself and be open to learning. Be a listener. Be a team player. These are all. This is, I'm. I'm. Uh, what's the word? Dissolving into platitudes. <laughs> Can you tell I'm dramatic sometimes? Okay. Two. This is uh, part two to my answer of how important is networking. I do believe questions of accessibility in this industry are le- are a legitimate critique and need to be addressed. Please see the stats from the annual report released by the organization Women in Film. Quote, women represent 51% of the population in the United States, and women of color represent 17% of the population. In television, 31%, and in film, 20% of key behind-the-scenes positions are held by women. Less than 1% of directors of directors are women of color. Clearly, there's disparity here. So as I said before, it seems a little exclusionary that I would want to hire people from sets I've worked on already, right? That's part of the problem, and I'm acknowledging that Uh, because you get someone who's like traditionally been on set. They keep being on set. They keep getting called to be on set. They keep getting booked to do what they do. They get better at what they do because they're doing it so often. That also said, it's, and I, I find hard to just skip a level, you know, like the uh, starting small on a set is really important. So I think at that very first like entry point, we need to be getting more people in the door, more diverse groups of people in the door. And then, as I said, hiring, they'll do great jobs. They'll do great work and then they'll get hired back again and again and again and You'll have a skilled group of diverse people in the industry. In the meantime, I think it's um, a a matter of, as a producer, taking the time to find people to fill those positions. I know, I know, I know. I said this already that I like to hire people I know already, which is true. But if I'm in a new location – why am I not looking for a person of color to fill a position or why am I not looking for a woman to fill a position? Like, I don't know. I just learned about Joey because of this newsletter and I really want their last name, <laughs> but I'll find it. Like, I just haven't gotten to find it yet. I will I will find them. Um, would love to work with them, you know? And that's someone I – at least – okay, let me think. I'm trying to – I have so many thoughts. The fact that Joey went to Mount Holyoke – makes me feel like they're probably a competent person. So that's part of like I don't I haven't met them. I don't really know yet or whatever and it's not someone I've worked with already, but there's like a vouch for like it's like the college is vouching for this person. Um Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to say on that point. I feel like that this is this thought is not fully completed, but we're live, so <laughs> we're just working with what we got. Also, it's the end of a of a long day. Okay, point number three. I think that networking is a legitimate way to impact these statistics and create more parity in the industry. That includes getting a diverse group of people on set and creating mentorship opportunities. <laughs> okay, so basically I kind of went into that in my spiel after point two. So yeah, exactly what I said before. Let's get more people in on on bottom level. Start from start um, from a position where you're going to learn a ton. And the mentorship thing is is real. I think that's very important. Um, and I think that that would help with parity in the industry as well. Okay, so my last, I guess I'm just going to finish out with the last like notes because those are the answers to all my questions. Oh, <laughs> we have less than a minute left. Okay, so if you're going to start on the very level, very bottom level, you're going to start as a PA, which is a production assistant. You're going to do a little bit of everything in that role potentially. If you have experience doing like makeup or wardrobe or 
um, electrical or whatever, and you want to be working in film, those are good entry points. I have background in wardrobe, which like low key gives me some familiarity with what it's like working on a production and a set. So find your niche and find your niche, find your niche and run with it. Also, don't be afraid to to just get on set at whatever capacity. Respect yourself, demand respect, and you'll get paid eventually. <laughs> okay. Put your questions in the comments. I know this is like kind of a fast and loose spiel video. Uh, and I wish you the best. I wish you the very, very best. Uh, this industry can be hard but it can be awesome. So ta-ta for now. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to say this. So my name is Rose Donahue. I'm an actor and producer. Smash that like button. Uh, like and subscribe for more. <laughs> I mean, I'm normally good at this, but anyway, mwah, mwah. see you later.